Okay, the 2020 NEC added two definitions that I think were really important and quite frankly long overdue. Uh, we've talked about this concept in section 110.9 and 110.10 uh, since the 1940s, if I'm not mistaken. So it's about time we had these things defined. The first one is fault current. And really, we defined fault current so that we could define available fault current. And as you might guess, that's the next thing that we're gonna talk about. So fault current is pretty simple. It's the amount of current that's delivered during a short circuit. Okay, so here I have what I think we will all agree is a short circuit. Now, the term short circuit is not defined and it, it looks like it probably will be in the 2023 code. But if I were just to, to define a short circuit, I would include ground faults in my definition. So if I take uh, two ungrounded conductors of different phase or line, so phase A and phase B smacking into each other, or line one and line two of a single phase system, the black and red hitting each other, or a line to neutral or grounded conductor fault. So the orange wire hitting into the gray wire, right? I would consider that a short circuit. And again, I would also consider a ground fault a type of short circuit. So if I have a, an ungrounded energized conductor that hits into metal parts that are, that are connected to an equipment ground, that would be a short circuit as well. So again, the fault current is the current that's delivered during such an event. Now, the fault current can be thousands and thousands of amps. In fact, it can be up over 100,000 amps in different conditions. So I know that when I was young and, and dumb, <laughs> I'm still kind of dumb, but when I was young and dumber, uh, I was taught that if you needed to figure out which circuit, uh, you know, a, a particular circuit was, one way you could do it is to just open up a junction box and, you know, fault the conductors together and see which breaker tripped. Um, that's an incredibly stupid thing to do. <laughs> and I figured that out in the years since because we are talking about thousands of amps flowing. And boy, it only takes that one time where you do that and instead of the 20 amp breaker tripping, it blows the 800 amp main outside and then you realize, boy, that was a really stupid thing. Or if you get shocked or you, get a, or you end up getting burned, you know, because you're doing that. So uh, if you're doing that, uh, you need to stop. It is really not a good idea. But we get the idea. Fault current is the current that's delivered during a short circuit. So I'm banging these two wires together. However much current flows is the fault current. Now again, we added this definition really so that we could add this definition. And this is critically important that you understand this. Available fault current. That's the largest amount of current that can be delivered at a given point on the system during a short circuit. All right, so if I were to take a saw and cut right through this conduit right here, of course, arcs and sparks are gonna be flying and I'm gonna need a new saw blade, we all know that. But how much current would be flowing at that point? That is the available fault current, all right, the largest amount of current, okay, or, you know, what might even be a better example is instead of an accident, like cutting through it, let's talk about a complete total wiring error. Like if I were to, if I were to, to mislabel my wires, right, when you're face taping your conductors, you pull in some 500s and you got four black wires and you label them black, red, blue, white, and then on the other end, you label them wrong. So you end up having a short circuit, right? You end up turning the breaker on and you, and you go phase to neutral. That would be a gross wiring error. That would be what we would call a bolted fault, okay? And that's where you take the two conductors with no impedance at all between them and you just bolt them together and turn it on. That's the highest amount of current. So the question is, what's the highest amount of current that could flow right here or right here? or right here. That's the available fault current. And the reason we need to know the available fault current is we need to know how to properly uh, size our circuit breakers and fuses. Now, when I say size them, I don't mean a 20 amp versus a 30 amp. I mean, take that circuit breaker and turn it on its side and read the interrupting rating. It's not gonna be 20 or 30 amps. It's gonna be like 10,000 amps or maybe 14,000 or 22,000 or 42,000, 65,000. Uh, that's your interrupting rating. 
So we're going to talk about interrupting rating a little bit later on in this series, but for right now, I do have a video that shows how to calculate the available fault current. And I can say that in almost every application, the farther you get from the source, the lower the number is going to be. All right, so if I were to take my saw and cut through this conduit right here, maybe 11,800 amps would flow. All right, well, that means that this circuit breaker up here had better be rated to handle 11,800 amps worth of current, right? If it can't handle it, then the failure is usually catastrophic. Um, when you read the circuit breaker standard, the, the UL standard for testing breakers, one of the tests that you perform for the interrupting rating is you have a circuit breaker and they actually, you hold a piece of cotton one inch away from the circuit breaker and you deliver fault current to it. And the cotton is not allowed to ignite. Now think about that for a minute. That means flames are not allowed to shoot out of the breaker <laughs> in order to be a compliant test. Which means if you have 20,000 amps of available fault current and you put a 10,000 amp breaker there, that means you could have flames shooting out of that circuit breaker. That's the type of failure we're talking about when we have misapplied interrupting ratings. So it's really important that you understand available fault current, how to calculate it, and how to handle interrupting ratings. Now there's an informational note that says, look, a short circuit can occur during abnormal conditions like a ground fault or a fault between circuit conductors. So over here on the left, we've seen this panel board that, uh, that had some sort of a flash happening in it as a result of a short circuit. Over here on the right, we've got an SE cable uh, where the drywaller put a screw right through the cable. And that would be an example of either a short circuit or a ground fault, depending on which, uh, on which wires it hit. But if you look closely, you can see that it actually blew a chunk out of the equipment grounding conductor. This was a substantial uh, ground fault. So I'm going to put a link below in the video to the video that I did about calculating fault currents and dealing with interrupting ratings. All right, so if you want to know more about this, click on the video below. Be sure to like, follow, subscribe, and ring the bell.